This video is brought to you by Squarespace, the amazing platform to build a lovely online presence. Hello everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad that you're here today. So recently I uploaded a video where I ranked the 10 classics that I have read so far in 2023 from 1 to 10 and I had so much fun making that video and you guys seem to really enjoy it as well. So I thought it would be even more fun to rank the other books that I have read so far in 2023, basically the non-classics. There are a lot of different genres here, a lot of different books for different age groups, and so this is really just all the books that I consider not classics. Um, and so I have 16 books here. I'm going to be ranking them from one to 16, one being my favorite of the 16, and 16 being my least favorite of the 16. I don't really know how this is going to go because I have read some amazing books um, this year and I really don't know which one I'm going to pick for number one. I have no clue. This is just going to be a uh, kind of spur of the moment type of thing, just how I'm feeling in this moment right now. This could potentially change by the end of the year. If you guys are interested in hearing me talk a little bit more about these books, I do always mention them in my wrap-ups at the end of the months, so if you want to hear a little bit more about these books, usually I have mentioned them previously. Anyway, I am going to just record my screen like I did for the other video, and we are going to rank the 16 non-classic books that I have read so far in 2023. So as you guys can see, I have stacked all the books in the top right corner. They're in no particular order, so I'm just going to go through them and put them in slots randomly. So the first book is The Miraculous Journey of Edward Tulane by Katie Camillo. This is one of my all-time favorite books. I read it for the first time when I was really young, and so this was a millionth reread of mine. So I feel like it's kind of unfair to put it in the number one spot, just because I feel like that should be saved for a book that I read for the first time in 2023. So I I think I'm going to put it in slot 8 for now and we'll go from there. I just feel like that's that's fair. Um, but I love The Miraculous Journey of Edward Tulane. It's one of my favorite stories. And then the next book is Neverwhere by Neil Gaiman. I adore Neil Gaiman. I loved Neverwhere. His world building in this book was top notch. Like he has masterful world building skills, but I feel like in Neverwhere it was so brilliant. The way that he named things, the characters were so beautiful and brilliant and just everything about this book I loved. So I feel like it's going to be definitely in the top six. I think I'm going to put it in slot four for now just because I want to leave the top three opened and we can switch things around as we go. The next book is A Walk in the Woods by Bill Bryson. This is a nonfiction book um, where Bill Bryson takes us on the journey of walking the Appalachian Trail, but I wouldn't say it wowed me in any particular way. I really enjoyed it, but it wasn't anything that I found groundbreaking. So I think I'm going to put it maybe in slot 9 or 10. Maybe I'll do 10. And then we have another Neil Gaiman. This is Fortunately the Milk. This is also the edition that's illustrated by Chris Riddell. Um, this was such a funny, whimsical, wacky story. I, again, love Neil Gaiman. He really can do no wrong. Um, I really enjoyed this book, but I wouldn't say... It was an all-time favorite, so I might put it in slot 7 for now. Then the next book is The Subtle Knife, which is in the His Dark Materials series by Philip Pullman. Last year, in 2022, I read The Golden Compass, but then um, in 2023, I read The Subtle Knife, and I still have to read The Amber Spyglass, but this is my first time reading the His Dark Materials series. I didn't grow up reading it, which is such a shame because I feel like my younger self would have loved this story, um, but it's such a brilliant fantasy novel. It is a middle grade, but it is quite dark at times. Should I put it in slot six for now? I feel like I'm going to move Fortunately the Milk to nine and do The Subtle Knife in seven. I feel like that feels better. I did enjoy it a little bit more than Fortunately the Milk. The next book we have is The Anthropocene Reviewed by John Green. I adored this book. I absolutely loved it. This is John Green's nonfiction where he ranks random things on a five-star scale, and I loved it. I listened to the audiobook, which he narrates himself, and I could listen to him talk about random things and rank them on a five-star scale absolutely every day of my whole life. I <laughs> loved this book. He's such a gem of a human being, and I loved it. 
So I think I'm going to put it in slot three for now. It could potentially go up um, in ranking. Some of my favorite chapters were Sunsets, Auld Lang Syne was definitely one of my favorites. So many. If you haven't read The Anthropocene Reviewed, I highly recommend you read it. Um, I also recommend listening to the audiobook because I thought that he did a wonderful job narrating it just because it's a nonfiction about his opinions. So it just felt like having a conversation with him. Then the next book is Norwegian Wood by Haruki Murakami. This was my first time reading a Murakami. I absolutely loved it. It blew me away. Murakami's writing, the story itself, it's a more like dark, emotionally complex coming of age story um, set in Tokyo and I just loved it. I think Murakami is just a fantastic writer. So I'm going to put it in slot two for now. Um, we'll see if it moves up or down but I'm very confident in putting it in slot two. Um, yeah, I really, really loved it. There were just so many scenes in that book that I still think about today, and I think that's when you know when you really love a book is when you can't stop thinking about it, even months after you finish it. Then the next book is Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert. Um, the subtitle is Creative Living Beyond Fear. So this is a whole book about living a creative life. And as a freelance illustrator and writer and content creator, I love any books or any podcasts or anything about creative living and being a creative person as a career. Um, and so I loved this book. I think that it it dealt with topics that I could really resonate with and the way that Elizabeth Gilbert structured it and the, the topics that she brought up just really hit home for me. So I thoroughly enjoyed this book. I think I'm going to put it in slot six. Squarespace is a website builder which easily allows people to create engaging and unique websites. I have now made my website portfolio through Squarespace and I truly couldn't be happier with the result. They have so many easy to use features such as customizable page layouts and amazing design tools so you can create your own uniquely personal website. You can even connect your social media accounts so visitors can find you on multiple platforms. From websites, creative portfolios, online stores, and analytics, Squarespace is the perfect platform to build a lovely online presence and run your business. So head over to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash carolynmariereads to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. So the next book is The Boy, the Mole, the Fox, and the Horse, the Animated Story by Charlie Maxey. I first read The Boy, the Mole, the Fox, and the Horse when it came out a few years ago, and I fell in love with it. It is one of my absolute favorite books, and this was my first time reading the animated story version because it was turned into an Oscar award-winning short film, which I just adore. I am so happy for Charlie Maxey and his success with this story, and he's just a fantastic writer and illustrator. Um, so this was a reread for me, so I do feel kind of wrong putting it super high, even though it is one of my all-time fa all time favorite books. So I think I'm going to put it in the middle of the road. I might move A Walk in the Woods down. That feels pretty good to me. The next book is Time as a Mother by Ocean Vuong. I first read On Earth We're Briefly Gorgeous by Ocean Vuong last year and I really enjoyed it and so I was excited to read um, a poetry collection from him and I did listen to the audiobook which was narrated by Ocean Vuong. I love when an author narrates their audiobooks. So I really enjoyed this poetry collection. I resonated with some of the poems but didn't resonate with others. And so usually that happens a lot with me and poetry. And I think just us, like any human in general, is not going to resonate with every single poem in a poetry collection. That's just natural. Um, I really loved his writing style, but I wouldn't say it was an absolute all-time favorite. I really appreciated it, and I think that his story and how he was writing his story in poetic form was beautifully done. I might put it in 12 for now and potentially move it, but I really, really did enjoy it. And then the next book is The Wide Window, which is book three in the Series of Unfortunate Events books by Lemony Snicket. I love, 
love, love, love Lemony Snicket. I think that he is such a brilliant writer. I think that he has such an amazing narrative voice. The way that he tells stories, especially for a middle grade audience, they're so dark and morbid, but hilarious at the same time. And I think when you have that duality of being able to be dark and funny, um, I just think it's a wonderful combination when you can be like a little dark and cynical, but also kind of witty at the same time. I just love that combination, especially in stories. And so I am going to put it in slot five, yes? Um, we will most likely be moving things around because I don't know how I feel about this ranking yet. Um, the next book is Together by Luke Adam Hawker. This is a beautifully, beautifully illustrated book by one of my favorite illustrators. I loved, absolutely loved the whole concept and the illustrations and everything about this book, but I kind of wanted a little bit more from it. It was just a very broad, quick story, and I would have loved for it to maybe have a little of dialogue and be written a little bit more like a story in prose? I don't know. My, my feelings are very conflicted, as you can see. Um, I love the illustrations, um, and I did really love the writing. I'm going to put it... Um, I think I'm going to move these. I'm going to move Time as a Mother to slot 13. I'm going to move A Walk in the Woods to slot... what is this? 12 and I'm going to put together in slot 11. Then we have another Lemony Snicket book. This is Poison for Breakfast by Lemony Snicket, and this is a really funny um, fiction book, so it is in the adult section of bookstores. It isn't in the children's section. So Poison for Breakfast, I think, was wonderful. It's basically Lemony Snicket narrating about a time where he ate poison for breakfast, and he's trying to figure out who poisoned him. I really enjoyed it. Is it my absolute favorite thing that I've read from Lemony Snicket? No. Although I think it's really clever and it's dark and witty, like I was saying, that I love from him, um, I do think I preferred The Wide Window. So I think I'm going to maybe move... I'm so sorry. I am really moving Time as a Mother and A Walk in the Woods uh, down quite far. I think I might put it in slot 12. That feels good to me. Okay. Then the next book is The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck by Mark Manson. Um, this is the counterintuitive approach to living a good life. I really enjoyed this book. Again, like Big Magic, I think that a lot of the topics that were brought up and discussed really hit home for me and resonated with me. I kind of want to rank them together, but that's not possible <laughs> or fair. The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck, I think the topics were more broad, whereas Big Magic was specifically about creative living, and I feel like creative living kind of resonates with me a little bit more. Even though there were things in The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck that I did resonate with, I just feel like Big Magic discussed more things that resonated with me. So I think I'm going to put that one before it. Where do I want to put... Oh, I... Mm. I don't know where I want to put this. Okay. Oh god, I'm so sorry time is a mother. <laughs> I end up walk in the woods. I think I'm going to move poison for breakfast here. Am I going to put it in slot 12? Yeah, I guess so. I guess so. Okay, this feels very wrong. Um, <laughs> I'm definitely going to change things. The next book is Astrophysics for People in a Hurry by Neil deGrasse Tyson. Um, I really enjoyed this book. I listened to the audiobook version. I was in the mood for another nonfiction, and I'm really interested in astrophysics and space and space-time, and I'm just fascinated by outer space, basically. Um, I have always been. I really love astronomy, and so I've been wanting to read this book for a while, and I was in the mood for a nonfiction, so I decided to listen to the audiobook. And I really enjoyed it. I think Neil deGrasse Tyson wrote it in a way where it was very complex, and at times I had no clue what he was talking about, but also he, he described it and explained it in a way where it was somewhat easy to understand. Um, I am not an astrophysicist, in case you were unaware. <laughs> so, of course, I didn't uh, fully grasp every concept that he talked about, but I think, like I said, he did it in a way where it could be understandable for the everyday non-astrophysicist 
like me. Um, and I really liked it. It was very interesting. Um, is it one of my all-time favorite books that I've ever read? No. Um, did I find it really fascinating? Yes. But I don't think I would rank it super, super high. Oh, I don't know if I want to put it in 16. I feel like that's a little hurtful. <laughs> the next book I just finished two days ago and I absolutely loved it. It is called Echo and it is written by Pam Munoz Ryan. This is a wonderful middle grade book about, um, it's multi-generational but we're following different people that they don't really have any relation to one another but they do somewhat connect and they connect through this magical or special harmonica. It's broken up into different parts for the different people that own this harmonica. Part of it is written during the Nazi occupation in Germany. Um, another part of it is written more modern. Another part of it is written um, just in different time periods. It pulled a lot of emotional heartstrings, so I really, really enjoyed it. Would I put it at number one? I don't think so. So now it is time to move things around. Okay. I think I'm going to put Norwegian Wood in number one for now. That feels pretty good to me. Um, and The Anthropocene Reviewed as number two. Those are definitely the top two. I think I'm going to put Neverwhere in number three. Um, I, I take this very seriously. I don't know why I am like, this is a very big deal, how I rank these books. It's not a big deal. <laughs> My opinion might change, like, tomorrow. Um, okay, and then I'm going to put the wide window in slot four. Oh, what am I moving? Oh, I'm moving number 14. Okay, <laughs> I did not want to do that. Okay, echo. Oh, no, I'm moving the numbers. Oh, gosh, Carolyn, what are you doing? <laughs> okay, why can't I move echo? Slight technical difficulties. All right, so I am going to put Echo in slot five. Okay, so now let's look at this. Um, okay, so starting with Norwegian Wood number one, that feels very that feels very solid. Um, the Anthropocene reviewed as number two, I think, is also pretty solid. Um, I kind of feel like. In my heart, they rank the same. I love them both equally, but they're very different books, is my whole point. Neverwhere, I also loved. Think, think it was just one of the best Neil Gaiman books I've read. Um, the Wide Window, again, loved it. Echo, really, really, really enjoyed it. Um, I do think I preferred it over Big Magic, even though Big Magic is a nonfiction. I definitely preferred... Well... Mm. See, I really wish I could rank these two together. <laughs> um, oh, did I scroll the screen? Oh, God. Okay, if I messed it up, I apologize. I'm messing up the screen. <laughs> Carolyn, what are you doing? I apologize. Um, okay, yeah, I really want to rank these two together, but I can't. I, I love The Miraculous Journey of Edward Tulane. Even though it was a reread, I do love it more than The Subtle Knife. I do think I preferred The Subtle Knife over Fortunately the Milk. The Boy, the Mole, the Fox, and the Horse is another all-time favorite. So I think I might move this one to slot 8 and move Fortunately the Milk to 10 and His Dark Materials, The Subtle Knife to, what is this, 9? Yeah, that feels... That feels good to me. I, I can't put The Boy, the Mole, the Fox, and the Horse and The Miraculous Journey of Edward Tulane any lower. That just feels wrong. Um, okay, the fact that these aren't perfectly in the middle kind of bugs me. <laughs> so we're just going to move them. I do think I preferred the story of Fortunately the Milk to the story of Together. Actually, no. So Fortunately the Milk is very wacky and Together is very like emotional and impactful and very deep and a beautiful story. I just wish there was, I wish I was emotional, emotionally connected more to the narrative where I feel like you, I could have felt more emotionally connected if there was a bit more to the writing and if there was maybe some dialogue. Um, I think I'm going to put Together above Fortunately the Milk as a story and the illustrations. Mm, I don't know. These are kind of very, very different, very hard to compare. That feels right, though. Um, and then the subtle, subtle art of not giving a fuck, I really enjoyed, but I... You know what? I think I might move this one again. I'm so sorry, Neil Gaiman. <laughs> 
Um, I, I feel like that feels better. Does that feel better or worse? Don't know. Okay, and then poison for breakfast. Poison for breakfast. Um, I definitely enjoyed a little bit more than A Walk in the Woods, Time as a Mother, and um, Astrophysics for People in a Hurry. Time as a Mother, I really enjoyed. I think it's beautifully written. Ocean Vuong is one of the most incredible poetic writers. Just the way that he strings words together is masterful. If I was ranking it on his ability to write poetry, he would be number one. But I'm ranking it based on my own reading experience um, and my connection, emotional connection to the story. Changing my mind so much. Can you tell I'm a very indecisive person? <laughs> um, I'm going to keep Time as a Mother in slot 14. No, oh, did the, the numbers got moved. Oh my god, Carolyn, you silly goose. 14. Oh, and I moved it again. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, please stop messing with your computer, Carolyn. Okay. I'm so sorry for messing around with my computer. Um, I think, I think that might be the final ranking. Um, at least for now. This is definitely going to change by the end of the year. Like I said in the other video, I think it's going to be really fun to do this again at the end of the year, especially because I'm going to be reading a ton more books and we can see how things change. But for now, because it's pretty much the middle of the year, this is like my mid-year check-in. I'm very confident with the top three. Um, the other ones, not so much. <laughs> Those can definitely change. I think, I think this is the final ranking. No, no, I take it back. <laughs> it back in my soul I can't put the miraculous journey of Edward Tulane I can't put it there it has to move I'm so sorry echo you're going in slot six the miraculous journey of Edward Tulane you're going in five even though you're really number one um in my heart but also Norwegian wood is number one for 2023 um I think I might move the boy the mild the fox and the horse to slot seven and slot eight is going to be for big magic. That feels better. That feels better. Okay. <laughs> now this is the final ranking. I could 100% change this in another five minutes, but I think I'm going to keep it here. Um, yes. All right. This is officially the final ranking. I am not going to touch it anymore. I promise. <laughs> Okay, everyone, so there we have it. That is my ranking of the non-classics that I have read so far in 2023. That was quite challenging. I wasn't expecting it to be that difficult. Um, I feel very confident in the tops. Not so much the rest, but what can you do? Um, <laughs> so like I said in the previous video where I ranked the top 10 classics, I would love to know if you've read these books, how you would rank them, or how you would rank all the books that you read so far in 2023. I would love to know. Or if you don't want to do all of them, maybe like your top five. Um, I just am so interested in the books that you have been loving. <laughs> And yeah, give each other book recommendations. Carolyn, please stop talking. I've been talking way too long. I am very out of breath. I feel like I've been speed talking through this whole video. Anyway, I need to shut up now. Um, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like these ranking videos, definitely let me know and I will do more of them. I also really want to do maybe some tier ranking because I feel like that could be very fun and it's a little less challenging than ranking them in number slots where you can rank them in like sections and put multiple books in one section. I really like that idea, but I did want to do numbered ranking for this one. Anyway, I am going to stop talking now. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed. I will see you soon in another video and happy reading. <laughs>